Hello again, everybody. Today I want to talk about something equally as fun as sweet picking. Uh, I don't know. I think it's because I started off playing guitar as such a metalhead that there were two things, well, three things I loved. Uh, one, sweet picking. Two, whammy bars. Floyd Roses specifically, which is what we're talking about today. And three, having 24 frets. How awesome is that? And you grow up. Either way, the Whammy Bar still provides me with a lot of entertainment. So let's go ahead and talk about this guy. I'm probably going to add this to the beginning of the video. If you have any questions at all about the Floyd Rose, just ask me. I know how complicated these things are. I set my own up. Uh, they suck. But once you get them there, they're super fun. Um, I'm not really going to be focusing on tricks like uh, flutters and dive bombs and stuff like that. You can go look at that stuff. Elsewhere, uh, you can just look up whammy bar tricks, and there's a lot, a lot of them. The motorcycle trick, and you know, dive bombs, and like a ring modulator effects. But that's not what we're talking about today. What we're talking about today is making this uh, sound like something useful. Number one, if you have a Floyd Rose, go get it worked on. If you don't know what you're doing, if you don't know what this guy, if you just got one, you're not entirely sure about it, go to your local guitar shop or whatever. Um, and have them set it up for you. And if they ask you, how do you want it set up? Just say, I don't know, normal. Uh, and then if you want to ask some questions about how it works, do that because knowing how this thing works helps out a lot. Uh, just in general, you know, if you're going to own a uh, guitar with this thing on it, you're probably going to want to know how it works. But long story short, the Floyd Rose specifically is a floating tremolo system. You can set up most tremolo systems to float but this is kind of just default. It's gonna float for you. And what that means is that you can pull it back to make the pitch go higher, and you can push it down to make the pitch go lower, uh, which most of them can do. I don't know if you noticed, I did that with my voice too. Higher, lower. <laughs> so let's talk about uh, how to actually use this thing effectively other than like stupid stuff like that, you know. Um, what I like to do with it personally is use it the same way that I might bend a string. So if I'm going to take like the seventh fret of the G here with my third finger, I'm going to bend it up uh, to where it sounds like it's the ninth fret of the G. So here's the seventh fret. And here's the ninth fret. So I'm going to just push that string up. Hopefully you know what bending is if you have a Floyd Rose. <laughs> uh, and I'm just going to push that string up to where this note sounds like this note. And there it is, awesome. Uh, so we're pretty much doing the exact same thing with the with the whammy bar here. Now if we want the pitch to go higher, we have to pull the bar up this way. If we turned it this way, we could just push it down. But we're, um, you know, we're making it go that way. We're pushing this guy down like that. So we just do the exact same thing that we would do if we were just bending, you know? So if we had this note, or this pitch, and this pitch, we want to play this note and then pull this bar up until it sounds like that note, right? Now the way I've got my arm pulled out here is a little bit awkward. Uh, but basically, once you get the hang of it, you know, you'll wrap your fingers around this bar here, which is very awkward. I'll go ahead and say that. The Floyd Rose is very awkward. Um, and you pluck the string, and then you curl your fingers around it and pull it up until it sounds right. Uh, this is a very difficult uh, maneuver that takes a lot of nuance and a lot of touch to it. But that's kind of the first thing you want to do if you're getting into these things uh, with the Floyd Rose, all this pitch stuff, is just work around making, uh, modulating one pitch to another pitch. It's not going to be pretty for a really long time, I can promise you that. Um, or maybe it will. Maybe you're really good at this and I just suck at everything, but uh, however it goes, that's how you have to start, is going from one pitch to another pitch by modulating the bar. And then you do the exact same thing, just backwards. So instead of going up a step, we go down uh, a step. So we're going to go from like the 7th fret to the 5th fret like this. So boom, that's what we're looking for, that pitch right there. Now we're not going to talk too much about technique with the right hand yet, I'll get to that later in the video. Um, but for right now, all you need to worry about is A, getting getting this little guy set up, uh, and then B, modulating one pitch to another pitch and being able to hold it there. That's the thing, you want to hold it 
after you get to that point, after your ear recognizes, oh, that's high enough, uh, just hold it there. So like, and then you're good. And then do the same thing going down. All right, so that's the first step. And do the same thing with, uh, you know, just going up one fret instead of two frets. So going from like the seventh fret to the eighth fret pitch. You'll notice that when you do this, when you go like a half step, uh, things things are a lot uh, more finicky with the with the Floyd Rose here because it doesn't take a lot. It takes a lot less than you would think to make that pitch change. Um, I'm doing this on the G just because I don't know. It's kind of where I find myself doing whammy bar stuff all the time. Is on the G for some reason. Um, luckily, no matter where you are on the neck, these relationships will stay the same. So the same amount of motion you have to make for the whole step on the 7th fret is the same thing as doing a whole step uh, pull on the 14th fret, for example. Now, between strings, it it is different. Uh, so if you're doing it on the D string, it will take less pressure on the whammy bar to uh, get the modulation that you need because of the way the Floyd Rose works. Not gonna go into detail here, but basically if you pull it all the way down, you can see that the low, the lower side of the strings, like the E and the A go completely limp. Whereas that high E and B, they kind of retain some kind of tension. So due to the pivot, uh, the lower strings are more heavily affected by the tremolo system that is the Floyd Rose. And hopefully yours does not give you nearly as much trouble as mine does. Um, yeah, so you do that for all the strings if you want to, you know, I, I find the D and the G are really good kind of areas to do this kind of stuff with, but you find those little, you know, relationships that your right hand is going to build um, for the D string and the A string, so you have... And then the same thing for the B string. And to be honest with you, I wouldn't worry too much about the high E string other than like little half steps. Uh, the B string. You can see the E string does not get as much. When you go down, you can get a lot out of it, but when you go up, you're only gonna get about a half step depending on how you're set up there. So, good job, I'm proud of you guys. I'm so proud of you. Uh, Keep making noises. Uh, for the record, I will also say, my roommates can contest to this, um, sounds crazy. You're going to sound like you're an insane guitar player for a while, for a long while. Uh, usually my roommates, when I was doing like really, like a lot of practice with the Floyd Rose, they would just barge in and be like, what are you doing? Quit. <laughs> Quit doing this. It sounds like I'm in like a carnival. Um... But yeah, now let's talk about uh, some of the more nuanced stuff and also how to implement um, what we've uh, learned. <laughs> Hopefully you've practiced it enough. Uh, and actually put it into some exercises and some useful, uh, you know, etudes, if you will. I'm not giving you guys etudes, but you know what I'm trying to say. Something musical that practices a technique. So let's take this idea... Um, of just like the seventh fret on the G and going up a whole step and going down a whole step. Uh, the first thing that I started doing was like, I would play the seventh fret, I would like pluck it, and then, and then I would play the uh, ninth fret and pluck it. Then I would play the seventh fret again, and instead of plucking the ninth fret, I would pull the whammy bar up to that pitch. Now, when you do this all together, it looks and sounds like this. Uh, and I'm trying to do it rhythmically, have control over it. All right, so you get the idea. That's basically, uh, really most of these exercises are built around that idea. Now, the nuance of it is how quickly are you pulling um, to that new pitch? Now, you want to find, you're really looking to find the that spot, you know, like where your hand knows, hey, I'm here, you know what I mean? Uh, so you find that like point of leverage and you try to pull directly to that point. So you can do it slow, you can kind of slide into it, or you can just try to get that note immediately as if you were plucking it. So like, and 
And you can do that, uh, like trying to pull to the note or just slide into it. You get the idea. So just try both of these ways out. I find that uh, pulling to the note will kind of lock the position of the whammy bar where it needs to be into your brain. It's really just a matter of feeling where that tension needs to be, and it's different for every guitar. Um, so just go over this exercise. You get the idea. And then you do the same thing. So we're going to go um, the seventh fret with our third finger on the G, and then the first finger on the fifth fret of the G, and then back to that seventh fret with the third finger on the G, and then instead of plucking the fifth fret, we're going to pull this note down to the same pitch as the fifth fret uh, with the whammy bar like this. Yeah, it's been a while since I've done this. but. Uh, just following the exact same rules uh, as the other thing, you know, you, you kind of work up the, the feeling of it. You try to figure out where it's at exactly, um, and then you try to pull it down immediately uh, instead of just letting it slide, like, you know, and don't do that as much as trying to do this. You get the idea. So then you just get this. You get it. Uh, do the same thing with half steps, you know, just go for like. You know. And then the same thing going down. You'll notice that it's a. Uh, it's a lot smaller of a motion when you're doing half steps, kind of a very gentle touch. Now let's talk about kind of the nuance of the right hand, um, like holding holding on to the whammy bar. One of the nuances is the position of, the, well, the angle of the arm coming off the Floyd Rose. Um, you know, you can change that angle. <laughs> so if you if it's like way the hell up here, it's like super like high off of your guitar, and you find it's very difficult to kind of hold that, uh, while keeping your pick near the strings, then go tell somebody to uh, to re-angle it, to change the pitch of the arm closer to the body. Um, I personally like the arm to be pretty close to the body. This one I gotta actually change. It's not it's not my normal position, but you get used to stuff. It's not that big of a deal. Um, holding the whammy bar while having your pick on the strings super hard to do. It's very awkward and it doesn't feel normal for a really long time. Uh, I take the, I would say like as somebody just getting into this, I'll take that the same way as I take somebody learning how to finger pick. And the best way to get used to it is to just do it all the time. Uh, always finger pick something uh, if you want to learn how to finger pick. You know, like if you're going for something with a finger pick or with a normal pick. <laughs> Do the same thing with your fingers. And that's the best way to get used to it. Uh, so with the whammy bar, if you're trying to get used to holding it in your right hand while keeping your pick on the strings, keep it in your hand all the time, no exceptions. It's going to feel awkward and weird, and it's going to feel like you're doing it wrong, but you're not doing it wrong because there's no real right way to do it. Um, there's just ways to do it, however we all work around it. So just get used to it. It's going to suck for a while. Just hold it in your hand. Uh, try to find out what makes it better for you personally. Like I said, I found out probably two years after using a Floyd Rose that you can change the pitch of the arm. Because most of them, I'm telling you, man, they come out here like that. They're just like super high off the body of the guitar and you're, you have to lift your hand up and reach for it every time. Uh, so mess around with angles and pitches of the arm and so on and so forth. You get the idea. Now, when you're holding the, uh, when you're holding the bar in your right hand, it's kind of, your fingers just kind of curl around it and they gently hug it the entire time like this. Um, let me get a close up of that, I guess. So we've got this going on where these three fingers are just gonna kind of chill around that bar while you're plucking stuff. Ha! Hello! You've never seen me this close before, have you? I love you. Um, so we've got this grip. Thank you, phone. We've got this grip on the bar uh, with these three fingers. Now, the reason we curl our fingers around it is because when we need to pull up 
that makes the pulling motion. We have to keep those fingers around it. Uh, but when we push down, we actually straighten our fingers out. So we're curling and we're pulling and then we're pushing. Because it, it, I don't know. I mean, you can keep your uh, you can keep your fingers around it. It just feels weird to me. So when you're pushing down, don't worry. I mean, straighten your fingers out or don't. It just everybody I know that uses a Floyd Rose you straightens their fingers out when they push it down. Um, so yeah, it, it becomes more of like a, a I don't know a pressing motion rather than they're two separate motions basically. They're not the same thing. It's a it's a pull and then a push. Um, so yeah, work on those pitches, uh, you know. And remember, it's just a fine little touch. It's a fine little touch, especially when you get to those half steps. Uh, also, this grip that I'm talking about over the uh, whammy bar, which mine is uh, loose right now, um, is good for vibrato all the time. You can just... You know, you can go for a lot of different kinds of vibrato with the Floyd Rose, which is why it's really cool. Uh, it doesn't take nearly as long to learn how to do this with a Floyd Rose than it does with your left hand. Left hand vibrato is very difficult. Um, so yeah, you can get these nice little tiny little vibratos in there. They're tight little small vibratos, or you can get these big wide vibratos. Like, sounds like a spaceship, you know, but uh, you'll find, you know, you can also change the speed of it. It's, it's a little bit easier to... to do that with an arm. Uh, so definitely work on those vibratos. They're super fun. Just get a get a nice little lick going and then end on a note and then just find those fun little like. Uh, you know, there's a lot of stuff you can do with it. You can do like left hand taps and keep doing vibratos. But that's more of an effect, I guess. So I don't really want to talk that much about effects. But let's do talk about something that I do all the time, uh, which is sliding into a note using the whammy bar. So you start, it, it's it's basically the same thing as a pre-bend, um, like a pre-bend and then letting the note fall down um, or just bending a note up. So basically you position the whammy bar somewhere else before you play the note. In this case, you can push it down, give it a dip, and we're gonna be playing the fifth fret of the G here. So uh, if we just push that whammy bar down, we don't have to be precise about this. We're just pushing it down so everything's a little bit lower tension. And then we pluck the string and let the whammy bar come back up to its natural state. Fifth fret of the G. That's the motion, but we usually, I'll speed it up a lot, you know. I do that all the time. I, I don't really think about it anymore when I do it. Uh, the same thing for, for pulling notes up. I don't know, that was a terrible example, but you get the idea. That's why, because I usually do it mid-phrase, so it's, it's like you're just kind of popping the whammy bar down to get to a new note. Like that. That's exactly how I use it all the time. Is uh, I'll play the fifth fret of the G, and then when I hammer on to the seventh fret of the G or pluck the seventh fret of the G, I dip the bar down real quick just by giving a little little push, and then I'll add a little vibrato on there, just to make it nice and sweet, nice and spicy. Yeah. So that's uh, that's one thing, and I guess you could do the exact same thing. Oh, that sounded neat. That's cool. There's a lot of cool stuff you can do with this stuff, man. Uh, so, like, in that case, I played the ninth fret, and then as I slid down to the seventh fret, I pulled the bar up. I didn't push it down. I pulled it up, and then it kind of went back to that ninth fret pitch, and then I let the bar go. So it was... Yeah, so that's one thing you can do is just kind of like tug and push the bar while you're phrasing. So I'm literally just screwing around here. I'm not even like doing anything with any kind of purpose. I'm just tugging and pushing every now and then. So. Yeah. 
That's another quick trick. Uh, my springs are like not muted at all right now. It's terrible, so I'm getting a bunch of spring noise. But if you uh, kind of smack the bar while you're phrasing, it'll give you pretty cool little effects. And if anybody's a fan of I, they know you can just sit there and tap that whammy bar while you're playing. Get neat little rhythmic effects out of it. It's like some kind of weird, uh, I don't know, LFO. Screw it. Uh, there were some other things I wanted to talk about. So let's talk about, um, that, was a, that was a very aggressive, like, yeah, huh. Um, let's talk about other stuff with a whammy bar, which 90% of this stuff I didn't really think about beforehand. Yeah, so doing those little dips while you're phrasing is pretty fun. Uh, using that pitch stuff in phrasing is uh, kind of the next step of what we're talking about here. So like we, we've worked on the, you know, finding those positions and stuff, but then actually incorporating it like, uh, where you take that note and then use the whammy bar to pull it up to your root or whatever phrase you're using. Uh, so let's use a very simple phrase of, let's see, yeah, we'll just do that. So let's say it's a uh, seven, five on the G using the third and the first finger. So third finger, seventh fret of the G, first finger, fifth fret of the G, and then third finger, seventh fret of the D, and then first finger, fifth fret of the D, and this is where the whammy bar comes into play. You pull that note up to the same pitch as it would be on the seventh fret of the G, or the D, sorry. And that's what we're looking for there. Notice you can still add vibrato with the left hand. Another thing you can do is instead of keeping the bar like this and pulling it up, you can push the bar that way to where it's facing back here um, and just give it a quick little push. And that's just another thing that you're going to have to feel out. And you can also do the vibrato down here if you want. Just mess around with it. I will say that like using the whammy bar, 90% uh, of it's just keeping your, I make up statistics all the time. 90% this, 70% that, 80% that. I bet 37% of you hate this video. Um, yeah, so like, just keep your hand on it and just screw around with it. Like I said, you're going to sound like an idiot for a long time. I did. I know I did. Like, my, again, my roommates hated me because it was just... And they would just hear that just for hours on end, you know? Um, another thing is go past that whole step range. Go for three frets ahead, like... And then three steps down, or sorry, three three frets down. See, I can't find it. There it is. You get the idea. Uh, then incorporate it to melodic exercises using um, like the linear scales up one string. I'm, I've not slept in a very long time. I'm very tired right now. But, uh, you guys get the idea. Now, another fun thing to do is to tap the whammy bar every time you go into a new note. This requires a lot of left hand tapping or some real comfort with holding the whammy bar while you're playing and stuff. But basically just give the whammy bar a little dip every time you, uh, go into a new note. Or you don't have to do it every note, but you get the idea, just like if you want to emphasize a note. Like that, just do that. Um, but really what all these whammy bar tricks are going to do for you is expand your tonality. Your phrasing, your armature, if you will. Uh, your timbre. There's so many words for music stuff. Uh, I barely know what half of them mean. But uh, sounds neat and weird, you know? Uh, the whammy bar is definitely used for sound effects. You can do a lot of cool stuff with it, but you can also use it with musical tact and taste and, and nuance and beauty 
and not just like I'm Herman Ree. You know, you can actually. Yeah. Yeah. You can do that all the time. You can do it for hours on end and annoy the shit out of your roommates. Okay, anyway, not about that, not about that at all. Try to work, try to use the whammy bar, you know, like try to like build it into your phrasing using these like uh, little pitch tricks. So instead of just sliding up into that ninth fret, why don't you use the whammy bar to do it? A uh, lot of fun stuff you can do with it. Hopefully you guys like this lesson, or as much of it actually makes it into an actual video, considering how much I'm going to edit it. Um, hopefully I'm not too rambly. I don't have much sleep on my brain right now. So if you want to know more whammy bar tips and tricks, you just let me know. Uh, hopefully this one was fun. Uh, if you really did like it, I'll like get some tabs ready. I'll actually make an etude or something for it. Uh, but yeah, that's how you use a Floyd Rose. I know how complicated these things are. I truly do. Uh, so I'm probably going to add this to the beginning of the video. If you have any questions at all about the Floyd Rose, just ask me. I know how complicated these things are. I set my own up. Uh, they suck. But once you get them there, they're super fun. Um, but definitely bring it to a shop. You know, like get a shop to work on it for you. But if you got any other questions about how to do certain things, you know, I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, and I, I really appreciate you guys watching from the bottom of my heart. Super cool that you guys would uh, watch me do a video about how to make a whammy bar do some stuff. I love it. Love guitar. I love you. Have a wonderful evening.